grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the gospel just read, especially these words of Jesus. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So what does it mean to be a Christian today? What does it mean to be a Christian in the 21st century here in Northern California? Unsurprisingly, there are a lot of different answers to that question. One answer might be what I will call bumper sticker theology. If you can fit it on something about this big and read it as you zoom past somebody going too slow, well then that's my theology. It might be being old-fashioned. After all, Christians kind of feel old-fashioned right now. It's a little bit out of step with the times. It's not quite what you would expect it's not what everyone else is doing. That's for sure. Maybe being a Christian means you're supposed to be angry about everything. That seems to be the most popular one right now. Anger at the government. Anger at a virus. Anger at people who do this or who don't do that. And it doesn't matter if it's my closest friends or relatives, if they are on a different side of whatever it is, then clearly they're not really as good a Christian as we are. Jesus kind of asks the disciples a very similar question in our text. What does it mean to follow Jesus according to Jesus. After all, it's about being a Christian. It's not about being a larger version of myself. So, according to Jesus, the first thing is to deny yourself. If anyone would come after me, that's discipleship, that's following. If anyone would follow after me, let him deny himself. So get rid of anything that is what you think that you want, or what you really do want. Empty yourself of all of it, because it is all filled with sin. Now that doesn't sound fun at all. That won't fit on a bumper sticker, will it? That certainly is something I might get angry about. Then he says something even more confusing. Let him deny himself, take up your cross, take up his cross, and follow me. So what does that mean, to follow Jesus and to take up his cross. I don't know about you, but I'm not going there. I can't take up Jesus' cross because I'm not Jesus. Let him take up his own cross is what the text actually says. So if that's Jesus' cross, What's your cross? This afternoon, I was fighting a uh, certain copier printer. That wasn't my cross. Although it really, really irritated me at the time. It's very easy when we talk about take up your cross and follow him to sort of think, your cross is anything bad that happens to you. Your cross is you getting sick. Your cross is someone dying. Your cross is all of these things that we all face as human beings. 
and please don't mishear me, and don't and don't miss what I'm trying to say here. All of those things are suffering and hardship, and they are very real. And they are very painful, but that's not your cross. Your cross is your neighbor. Your, let me say it again. Your cross is those around you who need Jesus. It might be your spouse. It might be your kids. It might be your parents. It might be your literal next-door neighbor. Whomever you run into in your life, every single day of our lives, we are faced with this reality of do I serve myself or do I serve my neighbor? Do I care for those who don't give two hoots about me? Or do I just go on my merry little way? That's the theology of the cross that again and again and again we as Christians are confronted with the very things that Jesus was confronted with. Do you remember Peter's confession at the beginning of this text? Jesus says he's, he must suffer and be betrayed and die and on the third day rise again. And Peter pulls him aside and begins to rebuke him because obviously Peter knows Jesus' cross better than Jesus does. Peter did not want Jesus to go that route. He didn't understand that radical love and mercy to the point of being absurd to the world that that's the essence of who God is and therefore of who we are as God's children. As God's children, that means to love the loveless, to care for those who can't care for themselves, to show mercy to the ones who do not deserve mercy. Why? Because that is exactly what Jesus' cross is. Jesus' cross means that he must suffer and die and rise again for you. In other words, you're Jesus Christ. And he looks at you and says, yes, I will bear that. I will bear them. I will bear you, Jesus says. And I will take your sorrow and pain and suffering and hardship and all of the other gunk of this life, and I will take it all into myself whether they recognize it or not. And I will die, and I will rise again. Maybe St. Paul put it best when he said, while we were still weak, Christ died for us. Isn't that a great picture? While we were still weak, Christ died for us. Now, because of that, because of who Jesus is, because of his cross, he puts this cross upon you. He lays this cross upon you when he urges you to love your neighbor, to show mercy to those who do not deserve it, to have compassion to the ones who don't, to turn the other cheek. Yeah, this is starting to sound a little like the Beatitudes, isn't it? Funny how that works. But that is precisely what Jesus lays upon you, knowing that you can't do it yourself. I, by nature, am not a beatitude sort of guy. Neither are you. But you are baptized. You are reborn. And Christ himself has laid this cross upon you and says, I will carry it with you. Follow me. Quite a picture. We receive his mercy 
and in turn, that mercy flows out into a world so desperately in need of mercy. Don't give in to the temptation of bumper sticker Christianity. Don't give in to those thoughts that, well, maybe I'm just old-fashioned and I'm just going to leave the world behind because they're all going to hell anyways. Don't give in to anger. Maybe that's the hardest one of all right now. But Christ is merciful and he shows his mercy to you even now water, the table, his word. Believe in his mercy for all. In Jesus' name. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We rise.